Hi guys, it's Alfred Monroe. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. It's been a minute since I've done a Frederick Mal fragrance review. It's almost like I almost forgot the brand until recently when I went perfume sniffing again and it sparked me. I'd never forget them because I love them, but I thought, oh gosh, yeah, I should do a, Fre a Frederick Mal fragrance review. So I decided to do today a Fleur de Cassis. The perfumer behind this one is Dominique Ropion. I'll have it known. He is my favourite nose, he is my favourite perfumer. I call him the flower whisperer. He seems to create magic with florals especially, and he's created things in the likes of Alien, Euphoria for Calvin Klein, as well as two of my favourite ever fragrances, Carnal Flower for Frederick Mao and Portrait of a Lady, of course. So he's the flower whisperer. I love his work. It's like he creates magic with floral perfumes, especially. And yes, I wanted to review this one. I've had it in my repertoire for a really long time, uh, but now I want to review it. So here we go. So this is a floral fragrance, came out 2000. Long, long time ago. And this fragrance is centered around mimosa and cassie, which is also known as acacia. It's a flowering shrub that has these flowers that I personally have never smelled, but I know how Dominique Ropion weaves his magic in perfumery to allow you to feel and smell a flower that you might not have smelled before. Or even more so to showcase facets of a flower that you've smelled already or haven't smelled to try and give you the full effect. And that's kind of what's happening with this one. So there is a little description on Frederick Mao's website which I want to read because I always feel like it's necessary to paint some picture. So it says, unmistakable high society. Reminiscent of 1930s Paris, a time of innovation and breezy luxury when design was sharp, but art was the stuff of dreams and family secrets were drowned wildly in champagne. Rare cassie flower and mimosa absolute from the beating heart of this intoxicate, intoxicating perfume. Rounded with jasmine absolute, sandalwood, vanilla and musk and cut with aldehydes for the clean edge of minimalist design and dipped in rose oil for a pampered kind of freshness. Une fleur de cassie is high fashion and perfect composition. Vintage vanity. So the note list was right there in the description so I won't go through that but let me tell you how it smells. So just a side note, uh, let me step back in case my head's chopped off. I really love Frederick Mao samples. They come in a really nice quantity. I think they're 3.8 mils or something. 3.5 mils. So they're a really good amount for you to really get to know the fragrance. You can fully wear them. You can really lavish yourself with them. I'm going to wear it anyway. This is probably the 10th time I've worn this. But let me tell you about how this smells. And the first thing I'll say is it's one of the quietest fragrances I've smelled from either Frederick Mel as a brand or Dominique Ropion as a nose. The fragrance is centered around mimosa with obviously the idea of acacia flowers as well or cassie as it's known and there's a lot of different tonalities going on in this fragrance, a lot. So the first thing to note is that the overall feel of this is something a little bit waxy something a little bit oily, something a little bit buttery. The aldehydes in this, I can feel straight away, are adding to this kind of buttery feeling that this fragrance has. And they are giving it just a touch of throwback. I don't feel like it feels as vintage as it might sound. It does feel like a lot of things, a lot of things. But the overall tone and the overall feeling of this is very, very quiet. It's kind of demure. It's kind of like you're wearing a, a luxury floral scented moisturizer as opposed to a massive beast. When it comes to my brain and smelling the things I've smelled from Dominique Ropion, in terms of his florals and also Frederick Mao as a brand, a lot of them are quite loud given. I haven't smelled all of them because there's a lot hard of them. But I have smelled Amarige, I have smelled Alien, I have smelled Euphoria, I have smelled La Via Belle. I know that Dominique Ropion creates very loud shouting fragrances. This is the opposite, total opposite. 
There's a creamy golden yellow floral feel to this. It's so smooth and it's kind of um, dusky is the word I want to say. It's powdery. It's like a hazy springtime sitting under a, a floral kind of bush feeling. It's kind of golden and very quiet. I mean, I can't smell it from here when I smell it. I have smelled it wafting when I've worn it, when I've gotten in and out of cars and things like that once you move, but this isn't one that's going to project far across a room. This is done on a more elegant, light style for sure. I can feel jasmine in here and it's almost like it's the illusion of jasmine. Jasmine is I guess bubbling away in the background, just giving a little bit more dimension, but really it's about mimosa. Mimosa is something that I wasn't super familiar with for the longest time until I bought the essential oil of it, or the absolute even of it that I have, I'm not sure. I really got a feel of what this flower is. It's distinctly yellow smelling. It's one of those things like dandelion or daffodil or one of those kind of like marigold, even though they're not all yellow flowers, but it has that sort of almost like a wild summer flower smell to it. But in this, it's kind of blanketed by this honeyed facet. It doesn't smell like honey, but it's it's got a honeyed facet. It's quite sweet. And the main feeling, like I said, is something almost buttery, oily, hazy type. And it's kind of cool. You can tell it's very refined. And I know that Dominique Ropion has in his mind or in his talent enough to make something that's so bombastic. So this is almost like he's pulled everything back that he normally does and made something really elegant, touch of vintage and something like a spring hazy day. That sounds weird, I know, but you guys should know me by now. Come on, I say weird things. It's not a super morpher, but what happens when it dries is the, I guess, the, the buttery Alderhildic thing does back off a little bit, which allows the more pollen -y side of the florals in this to show themselves. And I like that. But then it does lose a little bit of its weight. Although I've said this is a really quiet fragrance, it's quite demure, it's almost like a moisturiser. There is enough character in it. There is enough, enough longevity in it. It does have a bit of depth. It's just for somebody that's very, you know, I don't want to be noticed, but I want to wear my perfume for myself kind of person. Look at me making rules, saying who should wear this and what type of woman this would suit, or man. I don't do that, but sometimes things just come to your brain. In terms of longevity, it lasts quite a long time. In terms of projection, there isn't much at all, but I think that's the design. I'm not sure that Mimosa and Cassie slash acacia flowers have a shouty, loud prominence like, for instance, tuberose or anything like that. And I think the jasmine in here plays a really good role. I think it plays the role of just elevating it just that little bit without it being jasmine-y. There's enough, you can smell mimosa and this acacia a lot more. So it's really interesting. Buttery, summery, yellow honey florals are lovely if that's your thing. So I would definitely recommend smelling it. Frederick Mao's line, I'm a fan anyway, I've always said that. So see what you think. The longevity of it, I think is for a Frederick Mao, probably medium, but I guess when you're comparing things to, to Carnal Flower and Portrait of a Lady, which just last for, <laughs> I don't know, months. This one is a kind of shadow in comparison, but not all florals are supposed to be like that. So I always like to smell florals that are a little bit more toned down and just a bit different. And I have had to reapply, given, I'm not going to lie, but again, as always I say, it's my skin, not yours. Try it on yours, see how it goes. Anyway, I hope you really like this review. If you want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk. They have it there. I'll post a direct link below in the description. I'm much on my note, click below down there to subscribe, and I will see you guys soon for another video. Goodbye.